Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of HBase. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about HBase architecture. Although I already have given uh, the introduction to HBase in one of my video, but in this video, I'll be just be talking about architecture. What are the components of architecture, right? So let's start. So guys, HBase architecture is inspired by Google's Big Table. So what is Google's Big Table? It is the distributed storage system for structured data. And you can see at the bottom of my screen, I'm just sharing the, the paper title, which is Big Table, a distributed storage system for structured data, authored by these guys, which you can see at the bottom. So this paper actually inspired the HBase architecture. So if we talk about the difference or comparison between HBase and RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, you can see, uh, like in RDBMS, we represent the data in the form of table. You can see here uh, one table is shown and we have the rows and columns available. This is the traditional way of storing the information. But if we talk about HBase, you can see the data is stored in a map. You can see in this case, it has been shown that we have one data point available, which is Chaz, which has got one row ID and column ID. The intersection of it, it's called as a cell. And in this cell, we have a chairs available. The cell we use in the RDBMS terminology. So in this case, we have a chairs available, which is the intersection of row ID and column ID. It is a key for us and value is a data. So in this case, row ID is two, column ID is for underscore user or for user and value is chairs. Here it is, right? So this is the difference between HBase and RDBMS. So RDBMS stores the data in a row form, row, it's a row oriented database, but HBase is a column oriented database just to uh, reduce the latency, right? So in the case of column oriented database, as I've already told you, uh, like in this case, you can see in the left side, we have a traditional table available for first row. And for the first row, we have four entries in the HBase table. The right side, it's shown as a HBase table. So you can see now that how the transformation has been done here, right? This is in the left side, we have our traditional RDBMS table, but right, right side, you can see it's a HBase table in which the first row has been uh, transformed into the four row entries of first row, right? This is how the columnar oriented table look like. So guys, uh, in the case of HBase, uh, we can say HBase table is a sorted map. Why sorted map? You can see it's been shown the data has been sorted with respect to row ID. So it, you can see the value and the, and the keys are been mentioned. The key is row comma column and value is this value, the right side. So it's a sorted map, right? So sorted because of the fact we have a row sorted. You can see one, two, three, right? So this is called as a, a sorted nested map. Uh, nested means one inside another, right? So you can see we have a, at first we have a row ID available, which we can say like we can define like it's a kind of a primary key, right? With the help of which we identify the records. So row ID has a map column family and the column family, which is nothing but a collection of column has a map called column and column has another map called timestamp. So we can say for a particular row ID, column family, column, timestamp, we have one value available. So that's why it is called as a sorted nested map, right? So when we read the data from HBase, it performs a lookup for a specified row ID. Afterwards, it performs a lookup for specified column family, so and so on, right? So when you write the data to HBase, it need to insert the row ID in the right place so that the sorted nested, sorted thing should not be disturbed, right? We have to put the data uh, in a way that the, the things, the sorting should not be affected, right? So this is how the uh, data has been written to the H base so that the sorted nature maintained. So how H base does this? Actually H base does this with the help of region servers. So you must be wondering what is region servers? Actually in the case of uh, H base, the row IDs in a table are divided into a ranges, which is called as regions. I'll be showing you in next slide. So each region is handled by a region server. So let me first show you what is regions. You can see on the left side, the row IDs, this ranges of row IDs are called as a region. So it means region one have a row ID from one to four, region two has a row ID from five to eight, and region three has a ID from nine to 12. 
So these regions are been handled by region server. So region server can handle more than one region. You can see the region server one is handling region one and region three. Region server two is handling region two, right? So this is the terminology we use in a edge-based architecture. It's one of the important component of edge-based architecture. Regions, region server. I hope it's clear. So let me just come back to it. Row IDs in a table are divided into ranges called regions, and each region is handled by a region server. I hope now it's clear. So regions serve as an index to perform fast lookup where a row ID belongs. So obviously uh, it's helping. Uh, these regions are helping, and it is serving as an index to perform, perform fast lookup. Fast lookup means that. Uh, like edge base has to revert in in no time right will be have a lesser latency right so all the region server handles all the read write operations of the regions that allotted to it so region server perform a response has a responsibility or perform a responsibility of handling all the read write operations of regions that are allotted to it right so it means at very top we have a region servers at then under region servers we have a region So regions serve as index to perform fast lookup from where a row ID belongs. This is how the things are carried out. So uh, how this is written to a memory, right? So initially all the writes are stored in a memory. So when there is a new change, a data is updated in a mem store. Guys, in the case of Hive, also uh, we have studied we are having a meta store available. So here also we have a uh, the similar term available called mem store. so mem store is nothing but a uh, whenever all the writes are stored in a memory okay it's stored in a place called mem store but when there is a new change occur right when there is a new change occur data is updated in mem store then a change log is written to a disk okay and it's written to a write ahead log so we have two things available first all the writes are stored in a memory okay and in a, it is a stored in a memory in a place called mem store and when there is a new change okay or there is a change occurs okay data is updated in mem store then this change is written to a disk where it is written in the write ahead log wal so why why it is so important guys so this write ahead log is created for a recovery let's suppose if something goes wrong then we can able to recover through that logs even the dbms uh, you must have studied about log based recovery so we keep on uh, uh, recording the log for all the actions or all the events performed right if something goes wrong we can come to know that which action which uh, step has done that damage okay so we can easily backtrack the things so periodically the mem store gets full and the data in mem store is flushed to disk obviously uh, mem store is a finite storage right if it goes if it, it if it gets gets full right then we have to store that data in the disk so it is it will be written in the disk in the form of h file it will be written in the form of h file so h file will be will be recorded on the hdfs so we have a three things available you can see mem store it means all the writes which are performed it will be written on this in this area mem store when there is some change occurs it will be stored or logged in the write ahead log which is helping us in uh, recovery h file means when your mem store gets full it will be written in the form of h file so the data for uh, row key let's suppose if you are searching for a data right which is corresponding corresponding to a row key you will find either either in a mem store or in a h file so h files are stored in a hdfs so we all know the nature of hdfs it will break up the h files into a blocks and and store it on different nodes right it means data will not be st stayed in a uh, at one place in one node because of distribution right so hb hdfs will break up that h file which is containing the uh, contents of mem store into a blocks and store it on a different nodes because of a uh, distributed uh, distribution and because of high availability so when you try to read or insert data in some in a summarized way wh what we can say guys when you try to read or insert data the region server containing the row key is identified first followed by the region server will look up the mem store or h file and do the needful because i have already told you if you are looking for a data for a particular row a uh, row key you will either find in uh, get it in a mem store or in a h file not both so then the region server will look up that uh, the row id or row key and do the needful 
So guys, this is the full view of HBase architecture. This is how the things are there, right? Uh, things are managed. We, I haven't talked about the last two things, which is master and zookeeper. So what is master? Master is playing the same role as in the case, in the case of HDFS, the uh, name node plays. So name node in the HDFS is equivalent of master in HBase. It means master is taking care of your region servers, right? So we have one more component available called Zookeeper. So what is Zookeeper? Let's talk about it. So HBase uses a master server to manage regions and region servers. So the way name node were managing the uh, data nodes, the same way it is managing the region servers and followed by regions. So the master assign regions to a region servers. It means all the administration will be performed by master with, with the likes of uh, which includes load balancing, right? Uh, uh, assigning the regions to region servers, etc. So what's the role of Zookeeper? Guys, the master uses Zookeeper to help assign regions to region server. It means master don't do that thing of its own. It is assisted by uh, Zookeeper. So Zookeeper helps the clients look up the relevant region server for a specific row ID. So it is helping the client, the Zookeepers, helping the clients, okay, to uh, find out the uh, uh, particular region server which is containing the key they are looking for right so this is i hope uh, guys uh, we must have understood the concept of uh, hbase right and if you find this video uh, good so please do comment and if you find something is not clear in this video or have something i have said it wrong let me know right thank you guys and see you next video thank you